Uh, mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history and it's come to a final stop. Go to space with pride. Our name is Resilience. Resilience is power to recover, will to restore, and we strive to survive. Our patch has no name on it because our mission is for everyone. In fact, Crew One is you one. All for one, one for all. Fundamentally, the future is vastly more exciting and interesting if we're a space bearing civilization and a multi planet species than if we're not. Uh, it, you want to be inspired by things. You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. Um, and that's what, uh, what being a space bearing civilization is all about. It's about believing in, in the future and, and thinking that the future will be better than the past. Um, and I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. A vision of the human future in space. But tell me, who are they, these wanderers? We were wanderers from the beginning. We depended on one another. Making it on our own was as ludicrous to imagine as was settling down. We taught them the skills they would need and the tools. Then, as now, technology was the key to our survival. We were hunters and foragers, wanderers on the savannas and the steppes. The frontier was everywhere. We were bounded only by the earth and the ocean and the sky. We haven't forgotten. The open road still softly calls, like a nearly forgotten song of childhood. We invest far off places with a certain romance. The appeal, I suspect, has been meticulously crafted by natural selection as an essential element in our survival. Long summers, mild winters, rich harvests, plentiful game. None of them lasts forever. It is beyond our powers to predict the future. Catastrophic events have a way of sneaking up on us, of catching us unaware. Your own life, or your bands, or even your species might be owed to a restless few, drawn by a craving they can hardly articulate or understand, to undiscovered lands and new worlds. Herman Melville in Moby Dick spoke for wanderers in all epochs and meridians. He said, I am tormented with an everlasting itch for things remote. I love to sail forbidden seas. In the 18th and 19th centuries, American and Russian explorers, traders, and settlers raced west and east across two vast continents to the Pacific. This zest to explore and exploit, however thoughtless its agents may have been, has clear survival value. It is not restricted to any one nation or ethnic group. It is an endowment that all members of the human species hold in common. Since we first emerged a few million years ago in East Africa, we've meandered our way around the planet. There are now people on every continent and the remotest islands, from pole to pole, from Mount Everest to the Dead Sea, on the ocean bottoms, and even, occasionally, in residence 200 miles up, humans, like the gods of old, living in the sky. We know now that the planets are not stars, but other worlds gravitationally lashed to the sun. Just as the exploration of the Earth was being completed, we began to recognize it as one world among an uncounted multitude of others, circling the sun or orbiting the other stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. Our planet and our solar system are surrounded by a new world ocean, the depths of space. It is no more impassable than the last. Maybe it's a little early. Maybe the time is not quite yet, but those are the worlds promising untold opportunities beckon. We have uncovered wonders undreamt by our ancestors who first speculated on the nature of those wandering lights in the night sky. We have proved the origins of our planet and ourselves by discovering what else is possible. 
by coming face to face with alternative fates of worlds more or less like our own, we have begun to better understand the Earth. Every one of those worlds is lovely and instructive, but so far as we know, they are also every one of them desolate and barren. Out there, there are no better places. So far, at least, these worlds have not been graced as ours has by life. Life is a comparative rarity. You can survey dozens of worlds and find that in only one of them does life arise and evolve and persist. In our time, we've crossed the solar system and sent four ships to the stars. Neptune lies a million times further from Earth than New York City is from the banks of the River Bug. But there are no distant relatives, no humans, and apparently no life waiting for us on those other worlds. No letters conveyed by recent emigres help us to understand the new land. Only digital data, transmitted at the speed of light, by unfeeling, precise. Robot emissaries. They tell us that these new worlds are not much like home, but we continue to search for inhabitants. We can't help it. Life looks for life. No one on Earth, not the richest among us, can afford the passage. So we can't pick up and leave for Mars or Titan on a whim, or because we're bored or out of work or drafted into the army or oppressed. Or because justly or unjustly we've been accused of a crime, there does not seem to be sufficient short-term profit. T-minus fifteen seconds. Okay, nine is configured for flight. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. That are pressing in on us, that compete for the money it takes to send people to other worlds, other worlds, what awaits us on them, and what they tell us about ourselves. And, given the urgent problems our species now faces, whether it makes sense to go, should we solve those problems first, or are they a reason for going? 